for sharing that story with us. It's, I think there's a lot of lessons for a lot of us in there and um, well done for sort of patching things up. I think that's also important relationships and finding, finding the, that, the, the common ground again, you know? Um, yeah. So eventually the, the company IPO'd and uh, listed on the stock exchange, as you mentioned uh, around 2016. Um, and that day, you made enough money to actually never have to work again in your life at 28 years old. Yes. It was a brief sort of euphoric moment though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we actually went to the stock exchange, funny story, on my birthday when I turned 28. <laughs> and me and Emil, we are born in the same hospital on the same day by parents who knew no way. <laughs> so it was 28th birthday as well. And it wasn't even us who decided on the day. It was some bank, some guy just suggested this day and like, okay. <laughs> so it was obviously the best birthday gift I could have <laughs> <laughs> wished for taking the company to the stock exchange and getting to ring this golden bell and open the wow. stock exchange. And yeah, I, I made a lot of money uh, that day. But the biggest thing going back is like it's a feeling of relief like i'd been pushing myself in a way that i know wasn't sustainable the last year i remember i couldn't talk about work outside of the office without feeling tears coming up hmm. oh. i have this clear memory of sitting in a group of, uh, of entrepreneurs in a swedish entrepreneur network where we had this meeting where we're going to help people with each other's problems. And I had a lot of energy when I was helping the other people, seeing what they needed to go through, came in through with answers. And, and then they asked me, it's like, okay, Eric, what are you going through? And I remember that I physically couldn't speak. I, <laughs> I just felt the words getting stuck in my throat and felt tears like, really don't want to talk about my problems because if I open that faucet, it's not going to close. Mm. And that was all that last year leading up to, to the IPO and, and ringing this bell. So yeah. my main feeling was relief and, and survival. I, I don't think I even thought that much about money at the time. Once that had landed in a bit, then I got to this point of of euphoric feeling saying that okay eric you made it you you will never have to work another day in your life if you don't want to you will be safe and secure you can travel wherever you want to go and you reach all the goals and all your targets you reached yeah if using the analogy of money again as a religion it's like yeah you're in heaven you're hmm. set you can you're just enlightened yeah yeah, if, if the religion is true, if heaven is there, then having all the money is there. Mm. And I mean, if, if you reach a goal, something you really strive for, something you're really passionate about, how long do you think that feeling lasts? Yeah, it's very temporary, isn't it, generally? Yeah. For me, I think it lasted a week, maybe two, something like that. And then things got back to normal. and. I remember I was fighting with my girlfriend and I mean, those problems hadn't gone away. We still struggle in, in many ways. I, I got a cold, I got really sick. It's like, okay, that doesn't go away because I have money. And yeah. all of these small little things that I somehow had imagined would never happen if I just had money, they were equally freaking real and the pain from those were the same. So I started to feel that, okay, this whole money religion thing was a lie. There's, there's no heaven. There's no holy gate. <laughs> and that led to a feeling of, of emptiness. And yeah, I was, once again, I, I think I felt, you know, like, like money let me down or like everything that I had expected to happen didn't happen. I felt like I was promised I made. I promised myself that I would be happy if this happened, and then I, it didn't last. It was all. It felt like everything was a lie. 
So I went into soul searching land. I actually ended up breaking up with my girlfriend because we didn't manage to solve those issues. And for the last four years, I had just been working. So I hadn't really thought about our relationship. And then all of those problems that I'd just been distracting myself for, they were suddenly insanely real. <laughs> and I was so lost without her. We had been together for seven years and now I didn't know up from down. I didn't know where I wanted to do. I didn't know anything. Hmm. And yeah, we, I had went on a soul searching journey to, uh, to Africa and starting to involve in myself in, in a lot of different charities. And yeah, that gave me a lot of perspective on things. And I saw, saw things that I, knew was going on on a rational level, but I'd had no emotional connection to, to the poverty and the things that happen in the world. And see, what can I do to do this? And I started to find meaning there. There's so many like powerful lessons in there. I think for, for anybody that's uh, starting a business or, you know, as an entrepreneur and is seeking, you know, this sort of, you know, this, this end game of like a payout and stuff. And that's, that's just not necessarily what it's all about, but also you need to enjoy that journey more and, um, you know, just take care of yourself and take care of your relationships and stuff too. And make sure that you communicate, like you said, the one, the biggest things in the world you want to resolve or you think is a big issue is communication. And, and it sounds like, you know, you'd stop communicating with those that were close to you and who you really should have been communicating with. Um, and and not just speaking, you know, like your, you said, your missus, you guys split up. And one of the big issues uh, was that I think, you know, you'd probably stopped having sex and stuff. Um, yeah. Or, uh, so, yeah, like how, how did you tackle that eventually? You know, what, what? Yeah, so going into that challenge. So, so Johanna, my fiance, we're actually back together uh, now after a long time she was working in the company as well and i i can i have a very big sex drive and she's normal i would say so it's mainly me or just somewhere on the extreme end of the scale and obviously both she got quite badly burned out from this as well so no one had a healthy relationship to how much we worked mm. and that obviously took a big hit on our on our sex life and everything around it. And I'm a person who is a deep need of that connection. And if that doesn't happen, it impacts everything around me. And it permeates and it's, it, it hurts everything. And I can see all the mistakes I did in, in our relationship, going back to communication that I was passively aggressive about these things like i got mm. grumpy i got mad i didn't talk about it's not like i the, the mature thing would probably have been to sit down and say hey i'm feeling this and that right now i feel lonely inside i feel rejected i'm i don't know what to do i'm, I'm desperate to solve this and instead i probably woke up early in the morning, left bed, went out, slammed the door and kind of didn't say anything, which isn't an optimal way of, of communicating. And she ended up feeling like I didn't love her or like everything was her fault and mm. not understanding me or yeah, all of these, these challenges. And I think this is another aspect of entrepreneurship and, and, and business life that is very rarely talking about and i personally believe that so this this comes from a, a good friend of mine he's a, a sex relationship expert and has been a mentor of mine for a couple of years and he told me that a lot of the things that make someone a great entrepreneur makes them really shitty in a sexual relationship Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy cape fold, mountain range. Gotta be quick, so.